Hello everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Monday, December 14, 2015. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and we got balls. So yes, we've got uh, four copper-plated, completed copper-plated Kesh plasma reactor spheres. They, uh, they look like this on the inside, and they fit together very nicely. Um, I have actually four and a half of these completely electroplated, and for my next trip, I'm going to record for you how I go about the process of electroplating spheres. Uh, it was a process that was handed down to me by one of my YouTube followers, Electro1622, something like that. Um, and he showed how to uh, apply a conductive powder to a plastic surface and then use that as the cathode for the electroplating process. Well, I tried a number of techniques to uh, create a base that I that would coat the inside of these plasma spheres before they are as a as a base coat for them to become electroplated onto. Uh, I had mixed results. The the chemistry not so good at. Uh, apparently, the molar concentrations that I was putting together weren't exactly right and uh, you got to get all that stuff right so I found I bought an ounce of 325 mesh copper powder on eBay and even 325 mesh as fine as it is really isn't as powdery as the stuff plastic so when I would try to apply it to my to the inside surface with my brush it it didn't adhere the way I wanted to I ended up having to resort back to an earlier method of applying a thin coat of this flexible adhesive on the inside surface with my fingertip and before it was completely dry take some of the copper powder put it inside cover the uh, cover the sphere and just shake it around and let it impregnate the uh, the almost fully cured adhesive that uh, stick well and give me a, a solid enough coating inside here for the electroplating process to begin. Complex shape like this, and I wanted a nice even plating. What I ended up doing was making this little special jig that holds the uh, half spheres in place when I submerge it, submerge it into the copper plating bath. The copper plating bath solution is right here okay you see it's this nice nice uh, blue color and fate pentahydrate and uh, some sulfuric acid and um, what else is in here uh, let me let me read my ingredients oh and water okay so the, so uh, to 500 milliliters of water I would add 100 grams of copper sulfate and 26 milliliters of pure sulfuric acid. Now, 26 milliliters of pure sulfuric acid, not easy to come by. So what you can do in, in place of that is you can buy this at your local automotive store. This is battery acid for a motorcycle battery. It's about ten dollars for 32 fluid ounces almost one liter and this sulfuric acid or this this battery acid is 33 percent or one-third sulfuric acid and then the rest is distilled water so if you factor in the amount of distilled water and you want to get 
26 milliliters of, of sulfuric acid, you add three times 26 milliliters, and uh, that is, uh, somebody do the math for me quick. Uh, let's see, six, uh, Seventy-eight milliliters, is that right, of battery acid, and you subtract the 26 milliliters and you've added uh, 52 milliliters of water along with the 26 milliliters of acid. So you subtract 52 milliliters from the 500 milliliters and you get the right concentrations all over again. You've got to be real careful working with this stuff. There will be disclaimers on the video. Please don't try this at home, yada, yada, yada. Um, in any event, the, uh, the copper, the, the jig that I made for holding the half spheres in place simply uh, has spring tension on this copper wire. This is a copper, solid copper bell wire. And I take the spheres before they've gone into the plating, plating bath and just sit them like so and they hold well enough to stay in place when I submerse this into the copper plating bath. I'm going to do a time lapse of the actual process but it's, it's pretty cool and um, once I'm done I will then be taking all five of these plasma reactor balls and putting them through the nano coating process. Now of his knowledge seekers workshop um, more aptly named bullshit seekers workshop um, and I think it was number 87 I have to go back and look because I do want to insert the clip into this video for all of you faithful followers out there uh, who might have missed this little quip from it's very important. A lot of you are making a lot of mistake with this nanomaterial coating. Some of you are reporting you're getting no results. It's a hoax, they say. It's your own stupidity. You haven't understood what you're doing. Correct yourself, you get it right. You don't do it, you get it wrong. The way to get it right, yes, because when they don't get it right, they don't know what they're doing. First of all, all of you made all these coils and the rings go back to one of the first teachings we did first of all you wind the coil anti-clockwise then when you put it in when you nano coated it none of you or most of you forgotten what i said from day one in nano coating when you made your coil you put a voltmeter blackened here, reddened here. You have made the nanomaterials on your material, but with not putting the voltmeter, your polarity is all over the place. You have to align it. When you don't align it, and then you put it in to do, you have created a chaos in your field. None of you will get the result correct. If you do not put a voltmeter on the both ends in the first coating, we have rejected a batch of material last week. I was yesterday in the factory office. I said, this is a waste of time. Oh, we forgot. I said, blow it. You have to start again. Because if you do not, that little time, milliseconds, you put with a voltmeter, it shows five millivolts that's not important the important thing is you realign your plasmas in your layers then you get super you get correct conduct the the cross section of the field doesn't come if you put a one clockwise anti-clockwise instead of each other your coating is wrong most of you which report we don't get any result re nano coat get rid of your nano coating re nano coat most probably you've forgotten to do this he's basically thing everybody for putting together the uh three coil magravs units because he's he's calling his 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 followers or the people who are replicating this thing stupid 
I think he actually uses that word, stupid. Uh, so he, remember this now, okay? When you build your Magravs unit, Mr. Cash is calling you stupid when it doesn't work. Because you didn't take your digital multimeter and touch the copper while you were nano coating the copper and uh, aligning the nano nanoparticles, is, as Mr. Kesh puts it, on the surface of the copper coils that you made for your grav Magravs units. My question to you, Mr. Kesh, is I am nano coating my copper wires with fire, which is an approved method that you say works. How do you propose we take a digital multimeter and apply it to the surface to the surface of the copper wire while it's nano coating? Are we going to stick this in the fire? Explain to me, please. So anyway, just to that I'm sure will follow from you, Mr. Cash, uh, as the nano coating process is underway, I will you using the caustic method, be taking my digital multimeter and putting it on the copper, making sure I'm aligning my nanoparticles so that the plasma reactor will work the way it's supposed to work. All right? Um, I can't possibly give you any reason to, give, to find fault with the way I have put these together to replicate the body of your technology. And boy, do I use that phrase very loosely. Technology is uh, is really not the word for it. Bullshit is the word for it. But I'm going to prove it, and I want you, I want all of you to know that this is uh, a very faithful replication of what Mr. Kesh has presented as a technology. So today is Monday. Uh, I'm going to start plating the last sphere. Once this is done, uh, we'll do the nano. I think that should only take uh, a day or two, and hopefully this weekend I will be uh, putting the whole assembly back together, filling it up with the GANs that I have made. In fact, I made a little bit extra to submit to make sure that I had enough GANs to fill my plasma reactors, and then we will start the live stream uh, broadcast of the whole star formation plasma reactor assembly to see if we see any free plasma forming inside the space that uh, is occupied between the rotating spheres. Uh, and on that note, I want to point out that I have changed my live streaming service of choice. I am now using YouTube as my live streaming service of choice. A couple of reasons for that. Uh, the most important reason is that it requires much less computer resources, I found, for the uh, people who are actually viewing the live feed. I don't know why. Uh, I think maybe perhaps Ustream is using still a Java applet and YouTube is using HTML5 or vice versa. Not quite sure, but uh, whatever, whatever the reason is, I can tell you that to watch the live feed on YouTube, it does consume a lot less computer resources on your end when you are, when you are watching. Um, YouTube has this service where you can be notified if uh, a publisher that you subscribe to uh, starts or, or uploads a video and I think that's the key word here I think uh, it's it's you get you can receive an email from a YouTube publisher when they upload an email if you are subscribed and you elect to receive email notifications what I have found is that that service does not work for live broadcasts it might work after the live broadcast is finished if the video is archived at YouTube and later available for public viewing. That does no one any good at all who want to be notified when I go live on YouTube. They still haven't quite got that straight. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mail list, a one button click pop-up form where you enter your email address and you, you click submit. It will send you a confirmation email. You confirm that you are the one who sent the email and it will automatically notify you when I go live because what I will do is prior to my going live I will send out an email through that service that will notify you so that you can you can attend and and join in with the uh, with the live crowd who is watching my live video feed um, I would prefer that you view the live stream at altenergy.org that's a l t dash n r g dot org forward slash zero live dot h t m l i will post that link in the description below and the reason for that is because i do not use the youtube chat service i am still using the uh, irc service called idle chat and there are a number of ways that you can use that. One of them is at my website because if you go to my website page, there's a chat window to the right-hand side of the video feed that you can join in with the, with the chat that I personally will be monitoring. So if you want to join in to the chat, then please use the altenergy.org link. If you just want to view it on, and watch the live stream on YouTube, feel free to do that also. Um, you're, you're more than welcome. but you know, we, we always enjoy a good crowd in the chat room if you'd like to engage in some, uh, in, in some shenanigans, nonsense, uh, sometimes some, some genuine, genuinely uh, good discussion, uh, hopefully no, no political arguments and things of that sort. And if you uh, have an IRC client and prefer to use that, the, uh, the web address for the IRC server is idlechat.net and the channel name is pound sign zero dash labs and I will also post that information in the description below. I think that's it. Um, right now I'm going to start the plating process and um, I'll see you on the next video. As always, thank you for watching. Please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everybody. Let's uh, take one. Ugh. Labs, today is Monday, December 14, 2015. I'm Mark Brash, your host. And today, uh, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Hmm. Uh, let's see, how do I introduce, how do I get to go into this? And hopefully I didn't say the word uh, 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 too much because I hate it when I do that.